hello and welcome back to my channel continue here with my solo adventure but before this I would like to show you some more things that I have added to to the game one thing is this um, clock um, mechanic this is actually really useful during the game um, the solo rules actually uh, suggest this as well to use clocks to keep track on some factions or or events so I just added these progress clocks here this one is tracking the um, the unknown faction that we we have met the only clock that I have is more a counter just to count the swarm size size and actually swarm size and the threat level so instead of just typing it I will just use these to, to keep track of it um, here in the top I added this uh, image that I got from um, a background actually image for Forbidden Lands I just got these and I'm going to use these just to put okay it's night evening I'm not going to keep track of the hour but just the time period of the day just to have a, an idea um, what I did as well is I have created some NPCs and I did that because we are now going to have a haven for Brandon and and his sister so I've decided to create some NPCs and we should create some kind of relationship between them and we should actually include ourselves into this uh, relationship uh, matrix um, however as Brandon and Anne are new to this haven uh, I just create the relationship between themselves so here we see Brandon and Anne but here we see the other NPCs that I have created. I have here some, some interesting uh, aspects of the, the, the NPCs as well. So I have created this PDF just to, to be able to have NPC character sheet. Um, this is an unofficial module and unfortunately it does not have um, this uh, NPC actor. So I'm going to use this PDF. This uh, is Jack Thompson he's a supply manager and he his issue is addiction he's expert on stealth he's trained on mobility manipulation and this is um, his gear and we have notes here that's telling us that he used to be a pharmacist this is Jack Thompson uh, and I actually wrote uh, five NPCs as I said this is uh, I can just show actually the image. This is the Dr. Benjamin Lawson. He's, he used to be um, a surgeon, and now he he's the uh, physician of the Haven. And I think he's the leader as well. I I just decided now that he is the leader of this uh, Haven. Um, we have Emily, Emily Turner and she used to be a park ranger and now she is the scout of, of this haven so she is responsible for the perimeter watch and and so on and and Emily is related actually dependent on on Joey Shard and we already met Joey Shard this is the guy that allowed Brandon and Anne to go in this haven and we decided that Joey was responsible for for the um, security. He was guarding the entrance, so um, they 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 help each other. So, but I would say that um, Emily uh, depends on Joey for for some reason. And uh, we do have um, Evelyn Martinez. This one here, she she is. I'm not sure if she is a girlfriend or wife of, of Benjamin Lawson 
Uh, but yeah, but she does not have a good relationship with Emily, for instance, the uh, rival. But we can see that Joey trusts her. So <laughs> it's a very funny uh, situation here. The last one is Timothy Harrison. And he used to be a high school teacher. And now he is a farmer. So he is responsible for, for the food, basically. As this is going to be our haven, it was said that it was in the entrance of a, of a town or city. Um, but I will make it smaller, actually, um, and say that it's like a, like a, a villa or a condon, so, something like this. And yeah, just few houses. And this is basically the scenario. I could say even that we have about 20 people maybe living here, but actually I need to assign four attribute points. And we have two attributes for a haven. We have capacity and we have defense. If I say that we have capacity zero, we are in constant need to find food. And yeah, so we have here the number of inhabitants that we could have. So if I say that we have 20, it means that we have some kind of uh, uh, livestock or, or good fishing or hunting equipment and a small farm with uh, livestock and, and crops. It's only in, in, in this um, capacity three. So what I'm going to say is that we do not have a small farm, but a tiny farm or something like this because we do have a farmer. So the capacity is going to be two and the defense as well is going to be two. So the defense two means that we have a wooden fence around the farm without a lookout on the roof, uh, with a lookout on the roof. So it's not going to be a farm actually, but it's going to be some kind of, of villa or yeah, so something like this. Some houses and they have these uh, fence around this house houses and they have a little farm that they are trying to to build up and this is the the, the haven that we have so about 20 people um, live here but we have these five NPCs but there is just one more thing that I just forgot to do in my last sessions and is give to Brandon some XP and this is something that I always forget so in experience, we should ask these questions here, but uh, the solo rule says that we should avoid answer this one here. Did you participate in the session? So what I'm going to say, I'm going to answer these questions here and add experience for these two sessions. By, by answering these questions for these two sessions, I think this is the amount, the XP that I, I have got so far. Going back to the story itself, Brandon just found this haven, met these people. This happened actually during the daytime. Um, and as we decided as well, and actually the dice decided for us, is that um, they heard about Brandon's father and actually when I asked if he was here, meaning, okay, he was here maybe two days ago, three days ago, the answer was extreme yes. And I've decided to interpret this result as Brandon's father is here. And I would say very wooden. Uh, I do not know actually what happened to him. So I will make the first roll and this is going to be a critical injury just to see how bad is this injury that his father has. So let's roll here in the critical injury and he has destroyed eye. Yeah this is this is actually really really bad. So I think his face is is smashed and he lost an eye. And I could say that he even he is unconscious and he is in treatment. And, the, and this is the reason that he couldn't leave. But I do not know what happened to him. So for that, I would use the thing table um, just to 
have some words as inspiration. So I wrote twice and I have progress and chaos. Maybe progress of chaos. We've met this tank in our first session and we said that it could be a military faction that wants to rebuild the world. I don't want they to be mean or to be evil people, bad people, but yeah, I think that it makes sense that maybe this faction made, made something against, against Brandon's father. So this is Jack Scott, uh, Brandon's father, uh, with a destroyed eye, and I would say that he's as a destroyed eye requires um, advanced medical equipment. I don't think that they have this kind of equipment equipment here, meaning that they could die soon. So let me just see here. Uh, the time limit is days. I do not know how many days. I think that I'm going to roll here um, a d8. Let's see. Oh, okay, eight days. So I'm going to add a clock here and I'm going to put here uh, Jack Scott. And we now have a clock to keep track uh, of it. And uh, let's see, I'm going to fill already one. But my idea actually is to give like a, a challenge to, to Brandon. He needs to, to find a hospital or something, the equipment that is necessary to help his father. I think that Benjamin is taking care of his father. He says that he does not have the equipment. Um, and as they do not know uh, Jack, uh, they are not willing to go outside and risk themselves um, to try to get something. I, I will decide that there is a hospital nearby. I just do not know where it is. I'm going to roll a d8 to see the direction that this hospital is and a d6 as well. So let's roll a d8 first. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this direction and a d6. Three. Okay. So there is a hospital here. And now I would say that uh, Brandon hears this and of course people will tell him that he's crazy to go there alone. Uh, but I have created five NPCs. I don't think that Brandon would allow his sister to come with him. So his sister is going to stay with his father. Brandon would say, Anne, please take care of him. Uh, I need to go out. I need to find this hospital. And of course, we are going to spend the whole um, the whole day here with these conversations and so on. But next morning, um, Brandon would definitely try to move and find this, uh, this hospital. Uh, who could support him? Let, let's see, I, I'm going to roll manipulation and see how many success I, I have to, just to see how many people will help Brandon in his mission. And and I would say that Anne can help him here by crying, by by asking together with to, with, with with Brandon. So let, let me roll this. And and I have one success, meaning that one one person, at least one person will help him. But I will push this just to see if I can have more successes. 
and actually I don't. In in the end, I mess up. Um, and in a social um, situation, a mess up could mean that I offended someone. Uh, and actually, it would fit really well. But um, let me roll in the mess up table first, just to see if something else would be a, a better option. So let's roll. And a new faction is revealed or an existing faction suddenly shows up. Um, I'm, I'm not going to include a faction here or even bring the, the other faction. Uh, what I would say in the end, I think it makes more sense as this mess up is regarding this social interaction that someone is offended. Uh, the conversation was not actually good. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So let me roll this six here. Who is offended? Two. So this, um, this one is Emily. Emily Turner, and she depends on 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 Joy for some reason, and I think she is offended because the person that actually is going to help Brandon is Joy. So Joy is going to help him, and she doesn't like it. So this is the mess up that we have. So now we have a bad relationship with um, Emily due to this situation. So Emily um, dislikes a Brandon and I could actually even make some some relationship between um, Joey and Brandon as well. And I'm going to say that currently they are not friends of course, but they they are friendly to each other. So now we change some stuff because Annie is going to be with his father and Joey and Brandon are going to be outside. So first thing in the morning, Brandon and Joey, they get some food, uh, some water, and they leave the, the haven in order to go to the hospital. So let's first roll the weather, the weather table. So let me check how is the weather. One, it's raining. Raining, snow or fog. And I could say fog as well, but uh, uh, yeah, let, let's say fog. So it's, it's in the morning and there is this fog everywhere. Um, they move. They move. So let's move here. As this is a new square, I need to roll two dice and see if I have a six. And I do have a six, meaning that we have a random encounter. So let's see what kind of encounter we could have here. So let me roll the encounter type first. And three says a walker swarm. Okay, and I need to roll a die to see how big it is. And swarm size uh, of two means that we have about 1120. Uh, walkers uh, nearby. Uh, let me roll first uh, a ruins just to see where we are in this square. Okay, so there is this, this uh, theater and we see and there is this swarm of, of walkers. Let me roll the threat level as well just to see Oh man, this is not good. A threat level of two means that there are walkers close by, but they are not aware of you yet. Okay, so they are really close. Uh, so 
I think that I need to row scout in order to see them. And as Brandon is uh, with Joey, I would add one bonus for it. And I'm going to push this. Uh, I already pushed one, so let me push again. So, yeah, um, the swarm size is two, and the threat level is also two. And what I what I see here that I I failed in this scout is um, I didn't mess up, so I don't need to increase the threat level or something like this. But I just would say that um, as as Brandon and, and and Joey they walk through the the, the ruined city, uh, Brandon sees this uh, theater, and I think he sees this sign, and for for some time he just stops and totally distracted, and he looks and he thinks how it was and so on. Uh, meaning that really late he sees these walkers uh, really close to him um, and he needs to react fast otherwise he's going to be seen so Brandon needs to to stealth to, to find a place to hide and I think that Joy, Joy sees it and actually Joy uh, alerts him about it and he says Brandon what are you doing there? Don't you see that workers are coming? Uh, we need to find a spot to hide. And yeah, and they just go and try to hide. And as you can see, uh, my stress is, is bugged. Um, so I didn't push this. So I'm going to remove the stress now that I have added. Um, I didn't roll anything in the stress die, so all my success was rolled was rolled here. So I had two successes, and meaning that uh, Brandon can can hide, and Joey as well. So um, they they just hide and try to 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 keep their position, uh, waiting to see if the if the swarm moves away and i'm going to ask the oracle actually um, are they leaving extremely no so for some reason these walkers they they slowly came and they surrounded the area about 11 to 20 walkers uh maybe in the theater they they they, they just move out for some reason uh but then they stop it and and brendan uh, needs to move uh, i could just use this stealth to move through the walkers but the threat level is two meaning that he needs to beat the threat level um to move successfully so i would roll again um, his stealth and he needs to have at least two successes let's see if, if he succeeds in it or not and he only has one success i can try to push it and actually i'm going to do this and now i have two successes great so Brandon moves actually together with Joey and they, they are able to just um, leave this place behind full of walkers and they are able to move to the other other hex. Now once again I need to roll 2d6 to see if we have an encounter. Okay and we do have another encounter. Random encounter type and roll six faction encounter row on your faction encounter table in the solo rules it says that if you roll 
for a faction encounter, ask the luck oracle if it is an existing faction, or if not, generate a new faction using the guidelines. Is this faction a faction that we already know? And the answer is extremely yes. Okay, I only have actually one faction, and it's this military faction that we kind of created or defined it in the first session. Um, so I'm going to roll this six to see how many people from this faction are here. And just one person actually. Interesting. Uh, let me roll the reaction table um, to see how the NPC reacts wants to exchange goods, rumors, or something else. Okay. Okay, so it's just one person. Um, I have here um, an NPC generator. I'm going to roll it. And we have someone with a feature is barefoot, issue, bountiful, uh, one training skill, two expert, and has been beaten. Okay, and he has a ranged weapon, 10 rations, and a car, a motorcycle, useful equipment. Okay, so this is someone that has been beaten. And this person, is he alone? Okay, man. Okay, this is tough. Um, so I'm going to ask some questions in order to, to build this um, scenario. So um, let me first roll the, the ruin table just to see where we are now. And uh, high rise buildings, the top floors are black, uh, blackened by fire like a gigantic uh, matchstick. Okay, so a lot of tall buildings here. So we are in the city. And I'm going to roll my scout just to see if I can spot this person. And always with Joey's uh, help. So meaning that, yes, we can see. Uh, is this person, uh, is, it a, is it a woman? I'm not, I, I do not know. Uh, one, two, three, it's a woman. Four, five, six, it's a man. It's a woman. And, and I think that I'm going to call her... Uh, Rose. I do not know too much about her, uh, so I'm just writing here in order to, to, to have this written somewhere. So her name is Rose, and she has been bitten, and she probably he's, she was left behind. I, I'm going to roll in the thin table just to see if I have an idea of how they could uh, see her and community. Brandon and Joey, they see this uh, car uh, stopping uh, and just releasing this woman and they just go away and she she's there just alone uh, yelling some against these these people uh, and and I think that's it, we just see it. Uh, and maybe I not I do not know if if Joey knows about this faction or if they or if he knows or heard about him. Um, I'm going to ask the Oracle that does uh, Joey know about the this faction? Yes. Okay, so Joey knows about it. Um, maybe not too much. Maybe Brendo asks uh, Joey about them. Do you know them? And they say, and he says, yes. Um, they have been around uh, in the last few days or few weeks. Joey, should we help her? And the answer is yes. So. Brandon and Joey, they do not know that she has been beaten. 
so they just approach her and as we already wrote um, the the reaction she wants to exchange goods rumors or something else so I think that um, they, they approach her and they try to talk to her but of course she does not know them so I would need to have some kind of uh, manipulation role uh, just to try to calm her down and just to tell her that they are not a threat because I don't think that she is armed actually she does not have any kind of weapon but she could be a little bit um, aggressive so let's see if we have at least one success to approach her um, softly oh and we mess up again in a social situation uh, so let me roll once again in the mess up table um, to see if we have an idea an issue from the challenge sheet com comes into play Jack Scott is is in need of some medical equipment and we know um, about the hospital I would say that the problem that we have now is that as we talk to this woman and we try to to explain what we are doing here and what are what is our goal in the end that we are here to 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 for to to, to help someone and that we are willing actually to help her as well we just tell her that we are going to the hospital and this mess up means that the hospital actually is occupied by this faction and we just got this information for her uh, in addition I would ask the Oracle if she tells them that she has been beaten and I don't think so so I'm going to roll twice and get the most negative result but I ruled five twice meaning that once they say we can help you she just uh, move her sleeve and shows her arm and shows the marks of the bite of a walker and she tells them do you really think that you can help me and as soon Brandon sees it he just jumps back and would would Joey cure her extreme yes so what I think that happens here is as soon as Brandon sees the marks in uh, Rose arms uh, Joey immediately get his hammer and smash her head of course Brandon didn't expect that and this is actually something that he does not have any 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 kind of reaction I did what was necessary she didn't have any other option she would suffer even more if she turned as a walker and and Brendan just yeah just accept this but now he's a little bit afraid of, of, of joy because yeah she was still a human person there and yeah so this is this is something that yeah really complicated so as as we already know more about this affection and they are in the hospital I could actually increase the the clock maybe yeah let's just use this uh, I can actually clean these 
as well. There is no swarm size and no threat level here. Um, and then now we need to move to, to the hospital. Okay, so we move to the hospital. As it is our first time here, I'm going to roll 2d6 to see if we have an encounter. And we don't have an encounter. Uh, so we reach this um, area. And I think Joey knows where the hospital is. And they have this list of things that they need to, to, to take. Or maybe maybe it's even it's even more complicated. What they need is actually a, a, an ambulance with a lot of equipment. So they do not have a car. They came here by, by walking. But they need to leave this place in an ambulance with a list of equipments that they need. And yeah, so for these um, run through, I'm going to think a little bit how I'm going to do this and I will do this in the next session. So I hope you like it and see you in the next video. Bye bye.